both of us, we were in a conversation over the holidays that our marriages probably didn't work because we tried to get as far away from our parents as possible. So we were looking for mates that did not remind us of our parents in any way, shape, or form. Oh, wow. I wanted to ask you. Mm -hmm. You're gorgeous. You're intelligent. Oh, thank you're you. gifted. <laughs> You got so much Tell on me the more. table. Listen, I can't think of nothing else. <laughs> you got so much on the table. Tell me how you think your upbringing impacted mm -hmm. your dating life. Oh, Lord, how much time do we, we have? We got time. That's all we got. Uh, um, you know what? Dang, why are you asking me these I, questions? Because I want to know. The people want to know. Um. Oh my gosh, why are you asking me this? Uh, so my therapist actually told me this uh, the year before last. My therapist said I have abandonment issues. Mm. And so I think that I have a, a knack for going for people who don't keep their word. Ooh. Like I... I remember being a kid and my dad, my mom, even though they divorced and we moved to Miami, my mom always sent me to Canada every summer. So my dad had no excuse. Like right. my grandmother, my aunt, I still have a lot of family up there. So I would be there for three months out of the year. And then like, you know, if I, if she wanted to send me some other time, she would. Right. Um, but that was my dad. So you could have that opportunity. It's summertime, yes. you know, you had that opportunity. Right. And I remember so many times when he would say, ah, I'm gonna go, I'm, co I'm gonna come pick you up. I'm gonna come pick you up. My vincesho, my vincesho. Nobody saw it, nobody saw it. I'm like, okay. And I'm getting ready. I'm like, grandma, my dad gonna come get me. My dad gonna come get me. And she'd be like, okay. <laughs> now, was this his mother or your mother's mother? My mother. Your mother's mother. My mother's mother, mother. Okay. yeah. Um, I had a close relationship with my mother's mother. My dad's mom, she died when I was young. Okay. Um, so yeah, she's like, okay, he's coming to get you. Okay, sweetie, you know, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, let's see. he's coming to get me. And like, he wouldn't come. Right. And I just remember just feeling like, dang, um, why doesn't he want me? Mm. What is it about me that you don't want me? Like just feeling that as a kid. And then I think, growing up and then starting to go into relationships i feel that a lot like you'll say you're gonna do something you don't do it right and you'll make promises you don't keep them and it makes you feel very like unwanted like why don't you want me what is it about me that you won't fight for me what is it about me that you won't commit to me I, my father never committed to me wow and then i think being the oldest um, I have three younger siblings and I was always expected to do a lot. I feel like I was a mom at, at a very young age, but I didn't get the mothering. I was always, it was always, Jess, I need you to do this. Jess, I need you to do, do that. I got to go to work, so I need, I need to sleep. So can you make sure the kids have this? Can you make sure the kids have that? Can you go pick up your brother? Can you pick up your sister? Can you? And it's like, I didn't get that. Mm. Nobody really provided, that, provided for that for me. Like, or that I never felt a closeness with my mother. I feel like my mom was always just trying to get by, trying to make things work. So I didn't have that with my mom. I felt very abandoned with her and I didn't have my dad. So I feel like in relationships, I found the same thing. Mm. Like I will go above and beyond. Like if, if I'm in a relationship, like I'll do a lot for you. You won't even have to ask, but I feel like I never have that in return. I always end up feeling abandoned. And so for me, a lot of times what I'll do is the moment I like see certain signs, I'm gone. Like, I've had a guy tell me that before. Like, he'll say, I'm so scared of you. Like, you don't, you just will up and leave. Like, you don't even, like, will tell me, well, what, where did I go wrong? I'm like, well, I feel like you should already know that. Right. So, for me, I'm just like, all right, before you leave me, I'm, I'm gone. Like, yeah. if there's any sign, I'm, gone, yeah, I'm like, kicking the door down yeah. if there's a crack in Oh, it. I'm gone. Oh, I you ain't got to worry about me. I got my tennis shoes on. I'm out. Like, right. Yeah. When, so. in, intimately, when stuff will happen, in the press, media, social media, I'll reach out to you, make sure that you're okay. Yeah. The whole Whitney Houston thing happened. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 
Oh, I'm yeah, like, you did. You're going to live. <laughs> yeah, you did. But I'm curious now in this conversation, yeah. is that why you were so triggered when the stuff went wrong when you tried to date a preacher? Ooh. <laughs> oh, you know that story. Oh, look, you gave it to the whole world. You gave it to the whole Ooh, world. Ooh, you know that story. Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah, so I, I, I took that as Ooh. this Ooh. wasn't just a random person oh, no. who you encountered and dated, but oh, it no. had layers. Oh, there were layers. Based off of there were layers. what your experience was and then bringing that oh, to Oh, yeah. Bear. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you this. My mother... Haitian parents, they want nothing but the best for their mother, their their daughters when you're going to go marry, when you're going to go date. They want right. you to be doctor. Yeah. You have to be doctor. <laughs> right. Ingenieur. Right. You know what I mean? Avocat, lawyer. And if you say preacher, yeah. oh, you know, that's a good one too because yes. contrary to a lot of beliefs, people think that Haitians don't believe in God and that's so untrue. Yeah. Like, we're one of the most like even we have a saying in the Haitian culture, si Dieu veut, if God's will, if it be God's will, right? So let's say you say, oh, we're going to meet Monday. I'll right. say, okay, Monday, si Dieu veut, lundi is Monday in Creole. So lundi, si Dieu veut. So everything is like God's will, God's yes. will. So I remember. Say God's will in Creole again. Si Dieu veut. You got to say that slow. <laughs> I got a GED. Si <laughs> C what now? C C Dieu Zero. veut. Ver. Mm -hmm. C je veut. C Dieu veut. I got it. Mm -hmm. God's will. God's will. If it, if it be God's will. Again. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So you'll say, we're going to meet up on, on Monday, but Monday, C Dieu veut. So that's always something that we say. Um, so if I say, if I tell my mom, mom, like I met a preacher and, you know, I met this, I met that. I, I remember meeting him before we ever became that. that I met him like, probably a year and a half, two years before that. And um, at the time, he wasn't preaching anymore. He had moved to L.A. and he was an actor and was, he had said he was like a spiritual leader to a lot of people that were in the business. And, you know, I was like, oh, okay. But it just was always a little, <laughs> <laughs> it was always a little, eh. One thing about me, I always yes. have questions. yes. And I try not to be interrogative, but I can be an interrogator. And that's something I'm trying to, I've. I've no, it's better for you to ask questions. It is, but because I Because otherwise you're going to be left with the answer later exactly. on. Exactly. So ask all exactly. of the questions. This is for everybody listening. No. Never be afraid of questions. Exactly. Ask them. Exactly. But I think for me, there's a softer way to do it, though. Okay. Because I can be very thick, 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 thick. Like, I could yes. be like that. I don't know if it's a Haitian thing, but I can be, th you know. So I try to be, I try to soften up. But. So when we had become like romantic, I did start asking more questions because I, you know, he wasn't pastoring anymore. He wasn't getting um, placements like in acting right. and, I, and acting is not something that pays you a lot of money right. initially. Right. And so I'm seeing you with a, I'm seeing you with a fleet of cars. You got a Range Rover. You got the Wraith with the stars in the sky. You right. know what I'm saying? You got the, you know, <laughs> right. like you got the Bentley. You got right. the you know, the Rolls Royce, you got the BMW. So I'm asking questions now. Why you got a fleet of cars and when I come to your house, you ain't got no food, like, in the fridge? Yikes. Or you're not eating unless you I... It. Uber Eats. I got the whole thing. Okay. Yes. So <laughs> I was like, hmm. And then I remember him saying to me, you know, I don't, I don't want to practice. I don't want to be a preacher anymore. I left that behind because they thought that I was doing all this stuff that I wasn't doing, and but I need ten thousand dollars, and I'm getting asked to preach at a like a convention or something like that, preachers conference, and they want to pay me ten thousand dollars. I was like, well, go ahead and do it, but I don't want to do it because I don't know if I want to go back into that world. And I was like, well, don't do it. But I need the money. <laughs> and I was like, is this man trying to ask me for $10,000? No, 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 no. And so I said, do it. And he said he wouldn't do it. And so I looked up on my socials one day, and it was the date that he said he, he that the conference was. He said he wouldn't do it. Right. And I, I guess we had mutuals, and somebody posted him at the conference. And the conference was here in Georgia. And I was like, that's strange that you didn't hit me up. Right. Tell me that you were doing it. 
But I had remembered he had mentioned another girl to me that he had dated. Uh. And he didn't know. (laughs) 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 And he didn't know Uh. that I knew her Uh enough to reach out to her. No, no. And the moment. No. (laughs) And the moment I reached out to her, she knew. She knew. She was like, what do you want to know? She knew. She knew who the swindler was. She knew. And so going back to your question, which was, wait, what was your original question? You I said. I don't know. I blacked out. <laughs> wait, I didn't even said, mean to go this far. Yeah. I was asking you, <laughs> yeah. did your relationship with a, when you dated a preacher, trigger what took place oh, with yes. your dad yes. and yeah, with yes. your mom? Yes. Because you done gone all the way oh, to I the did. race. Yeah. Yes. yes. Come on back. Because, Come on back. No, it triggered that because it was the lying. My dad is a very good liar. Very charismatic, will look you dead in your eye and tell you a lie from the pits of hell. Is your dad living? Yeah, he's he's living. Oh yeah. You know he's listening to this. I know. Oh, he know, he knows who he is. <laughs> okay. My daddy know he ain't bleepity bleep. <laughs> like he knows. Like. But have you have you he, healed from what happened? Um, no. You have not. No. And the reason why no. I ask that is eighty three percent, Jesse. Eighty three percent of adult preachers' kids don't go to church. Mm. Because I'd they, definitely they, be going to Bedside Baptist. Yes, they, I come here sometimes. Yes, in the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> in the spirit. I'd definitely be going to Bedside yeah, Baptist. Yeah, no, but yeah. The, the favor that is on your life is absolutely remarkable. Yeah.